strength of line health, short week, where's mm -hmm. that at right now? Yeah, Carver has progressed really well um, throughout the uh, throughout the week and had a good day of practice yesterday. Is feeling really good today. Um, Bub has been very, or Hadley's been very limited um, up to this point. Um, we're going to see where he's at today and, and kind of evaluate as we go through. So obviously those two guys and, and Carver getting hurt um, and appreciating his effort, but getting hurt, I think, on the second series of the two-lane game and battling it through, but it did impact his play. So, um, yeah, those I feel pretty good. I feel better about Carver than I do Hadley right now. And then were you pleased with what line gang and Pistori showed us? Yeah, I was. Um, you know, you look at uh, the environment, you look at uh, two young guys in, in playing what I believe is a very good defense. Um, I thought that they held up pretty well. There were some execution things that uh, we look at collectively as an offense that we need to continue to improve upon. And and both of those guys were right there with it. But uh, no, I'm very, uh, very pleased with uh, where both those guys are at. Playing game there a couple times, especially when Avery was running at the perimeter. He was out there with uh, trying to run behind a numbers disadvantage in terms of blocking. What was your reaction watching that on film? Yeah, it was when we saw it, it was something that we can get corrected is what I looked at. And yes, you can get frustrated. You can say, yeah, he's he's being very aggressive with what his thoughts are. And we don't want to minimize some of that aggressiveness um, that he had. And there was uh, a backside guy who need to do a little bit better of a job. I thought one of them, um, it was kind of one of those 50-50 as a coach when you can slow it down on film. And I'm certainly not out there uh, playing during the speed of the game that you'd probably say it was uh, a little bit heavier towards uh, towards giving it. And uh, um, But I know he's a player who's looking to make a play and I do not want to, him to lose that aggressive mindset. A lot of, like, I'm sorry. Arizona runs a lot of mm -hmm. four down fronts, and mm -hmm. something that Taylor Portia mentioned is a little bit different in college football nowadays. Yeah. What challenges does that present, and, and what advantages does it give? Them? Yeah, it's it's interesting. You know, as you look at the evolution of football, and we had to go back and and look at some of the four down stuff that we had seen a year ago, and and you have to go back and, and look at it from a protection standpoint. You have to look at it from a run game standpoint. Your techniques, a lot of your double teams change when I kind of constitute as guards are covered. And what is that technique that, uh, that you see out of, uh, out of a center? What is the technique of the guard? Where's the alignment of a, of, a, of a linebacker, whether that's a gap combination or whether that's a zone combination or even in some of our man schemes that we have. So it has been a challenge and it's been a little bit more of a challenge um, this week just because of some of the guys who, yes, they've seen the four man front, but they don't maybe have as many of those starts against the four man front up front. Um, but I like how they've progressed uh, all the way through throughout the course of the week. How detrimental has the relatively lower snap count the first two games been and kind of getting the yeah. offense where, where you guys want it. Yeah, it, it's something that is frustrating. And, you know, I, I know and, and, and agree, quite honestly, that we need to get this player the ball more. We need to get this player the ball more. And those are things that we're very abreast of and, and, and we do. And I'm the one who's responsible, quite honestly. When we get that rep count up, I think it's going to give us more availability to do that. And you look at why is the rep count down? We talked about it a little bit last week. And right now, um, unfortunately, it's kind of a little bit of the same thing. What we can control is being more efficient on third downs. And how do you become more efficient on third downs? Well, in some cases, it's the execution. It's the details that we need to get better at. And in some cases, it's about being better on first and second down as well. And where you're at field position wise and, and and things like that because when we do get in a rhythm and you saw us get in a rhythm there in the second half of this past week where I believe we scored on three state straight possessions and um, you know I think we were rolling and I'll be the first to admit uh, I didn't as a play caller was aggressive enough on that last series 
Um, but we were getting in a good rhythm, and that's what we have to do right now is find ways to continue to get in a rhythm so we can convert on third and then ultimately stay on the field to get the rep count up. What else do you see from this Arizona defense that concerns you? Well, um, they do have some experience, and I know that they did lose some guys with a coaching change from a year ago, uh, but um, they did a really nice job of filling in some holes, and they did a real good job of keeping some of those guys through that adversity on their football team. So you can look at their personnel. Um, they do have a new defensive coordinator. I think there's some similarities from a year ago, um, but you also look at it and say it's still very early on in the season. And what pictures are going to change? What is going to change that we haven't prepared for? And that, Tim, is one of the things that that can expose a little bit of inexperience. And and you know, as we become more and more experienced, we are hopeful for that. But those are the things that, quite honestly, at night, okay, you feel like you're prepped for this and what you saw here and what you saw there, and then you go, oh shoot, what if they do this? What if we do that? And especially in the condensed week that we have and the limited amount of pictures that you're able to give those guys, those are some of the concerns that we have. I know those three and outs have probably prevented you from being able to, but have you wanted to get to more up-tempo? Yeah, we did. And, and I think, I don't know if you guys saw how the previous uh, opponent handled that a little bit. Um, and and that's, that's part of it. Uh, in order to get into tempo often, you need to get in a rhythm. And, you know, I couldn't tell you exactly um, minus the two-minute drill at the end of the first half uh, how many tempo calls that we had. I want to say it was four or five. So if you look at that and subtract that from the two-minute calls, is that, you know, roughly 8% of the time? Would I like that to be a little bit higher? I would like that number to be a little bit higher. I think our guys would like that number to be a little bit higher. And to me, it's incumbent upon us collectively as a group to get in that rhythm to get those opportunities to do some more tempo. Time for a couple DJ leads the team and catches through two, two games. Are you good with mm -hmm. that, or is that something you'd like to shift moving forward? Well, you know, when he catches a 40-something-yard you know, touchdown pass on, on fourth down, you're obviously you're very good with that. Uh, and it goes back to, I think, a lot of the same questions that, that are being asked around here is, is – you know, can we get this guy the ball more? Can we get this guy the ball more? Well, can we get the rep count up a little bit more too? And some defenses, you know, do a good job of taking away this part of the field or taking away this part of the field or taking away part of this. And, um, you know, one thing I do know and that I do like about it is our starting quarterback feels very comfortable throwing the ball to him, which is a good thing. It really is a good thing. So um, how do I feel about it on fourth down? touchdowns where he wheels out of the backfield, I really like it. On, uh, on uh, some other situations, we need to get more guys involved, and, and we're very aware of that. What's the key for Keegan, but for, for Keegan getting more involved in mm -hmm. this last game? How, how, how nice is that to kind of see him get more? It is. It, it, was, it was really good to get him involved in, um, you know, to make some of the plays that he made. I know that that's only going to boost his confidence. And I mentioned in, in – and there's a comfort level with that quarterback, with Avery, that he is really, really feeling more and more comfortable um, with Keegan Johnson, which is really exciting to see. And we got to continue to progress along with that. And what, what is good, yeah, you look at, OK, it was Jason week one, and, and it was Keegan more so on the outside this past week. And um, what is good is that, yes, we can throw it to our slot. Yes, we can throw it to our ex-receiver. And now how do we get that combination of getting all those guys involved?